All right, hello to you guys. Algebra 2, we're continuing on with the radical unit. And here we're going to be dealing with some ra solving some radical equations, equations involving some radicals. Okay. Now, again, before we get into this, just reviewing, because it's been a little while since we've dealt with equations. Again, the, the kind of the principles or the rules that apply with equations. Again, there's two sides to the equation. The equal sign kind of splits those sides up. Um, and then again, when we try to move things around in the equation to, to solve for x and to get the x value by itself, we need to use inverse operations, which means we need to cancel things out by doing the opposite uh, of what's there. And then also we need to keep the equation in balance uh, by doing the same thing to both sides, right? Because if we don't do that, uh, if we just like minus seven here to cancel that out, and then we don't minus seven here, it's no longer an equation that is true. Um, we could no longer say that this side equals this side. So just the rules to review real quickly before we jump in, okay? But again, just solving these, right? This is our first time seeing equations that have these radicals in there, okay? And so to be able to get the x all by itself, we need to figure out like, okay, how am I gonna cancel out that radical? And so just again, thinking about a radical and, and how we can cancel that. So if I said like the square root of four times the square root of four, right? What would that equal? Well, that would equal, right? The square root of four is two. And again, square root of four is two. So I could say two times two equals four. And you, I know you guys know that, but so again, I could say the square root of four times the square root of four is four, okay? But again, what's this? This is something times itself, right? So I could write this as the square root of four squared. Basically, I went through that just to show you that a square root and a two exponent, those two things are kind of opposites, okay? So a square root will cancel with the two exponent or squaring it, right? And so you'd be left with just four. Okay, and so that's what I'm gonna apply to these problems, okay? So when I see a square root and I wanna cancel that, I'm gonna square it to cancel it. But I don't do that right away, okay? So when I look at number one here, okay, I see the square root of x plus seven equals 15. And so I think about this, right? Before I take the square root, taking the square root is gonna be like the last thing that I do. I want that radical to be all by itself because if I square everything now, I'm gonna to have to square this seven, I'm gonna to have to square this 15, and it'll be just be a little bit more complicated. So instead, I just wanna minus this seven, right, to cancel that out. And because it combines over here, it'll definitely make it a little simpler. So the square root of x equals 15 minus seven is eight, okay? And now that the radical is by itself, so I can cancel the square root of x by squaring, right? I can cancel the radical with the square, right? But again, that rule says I have to do the same thing to both sides. So if I squared this side, I also have to square the right side, okay? But once I do that, right, I'm left with x on the left equals eight squared. Now what's eight squared? Eight, eight squared would be eight times itself, eight times eight, which is 64, okay? So for this to be true, I would have to say, okay, the square root of 64 plus seven equals 15. And again, you can check that answer very simply by just plugging in 64. So does the square root of 74 plus seven equal 15? Yes, right, because the square root of 64 is eight. Eight plus seven does equal 15, so it checks out. Now looking at number two, same idea, right? This is saying two times the square root of x equals 10, right? So I have my two sides. Again, I don't want to square it right away. I want to get the square root by itself. So I would divide by this two, right? That's being multiplied. So I divide both sides by two, and I would get the square root of x equals 10 divided by two is five. And then I would square both sides, cancel out that square root. And so I would get x equals five squared is 25, okay? And same thing, if I did two times the square root of 25, so the square root of 25 is five, so two times five does equal 10, and it would check out. Now looking at number three, a little bit more complicated, we have a little bit more terms under the radical, okay? But same process, okay? So again, I look at what's outside of the radical, and I would cancel that, so I would divide this three, okay? So I'm left with the square root of x plus five equals four. Okay, now, 
what might be tempting here is to minus this five, right? Because that's what we normally do, okay? But you can't cancel something that is under a radical. So we can't cancel this five like we would cancel like this plus seven up here because the plus five is part of the radical, okay? So once the radical is by itself, no matter how many terms are under the radical, I have to cancel that by squaring, okay? And all that's gonna do is it's gonna cancel out the square root part so that I can then cancel out whatever else is with x there, okay? So I square both sides and I'm left with just x plus five equals four squared, four squared is 16, okay? And now I just have x plus five equals 16, so I minus that five, right? It's just an extra step because there is another number over there. So x would equal 16 minus five, which is 11, okay? And then again, you can plug that in, plug in 11 for x. So 11 plus five would be 16. The square root of 16 is four, and then three times four does equal 12. So it would check out. We can also deal with some problems with cube roots, okay? And so you could imagine what would cancel that out, okay? But the same idea. So we look at this, we find my equal sign that splits up the two sides. And then I wanna cancel out any number that's not part of the radical, right? So I could plus this four to both sides. I would get the cube root of 13x minus 1 equals 0 plus 4 is 4. And then, again, with a cube root, this 3 is not This three is kind of part of the radical. So I don't want to just, like, cancel this 3. So that's saying a cube root. So right with a square root canceled with a 2 exponent, so a cube root is going to cancel with a 3 exponent, as you could have guessed. Okay. So I would cube both sides, or raise both to the third power, and then I would get 13x minus one equals four cubed. Okay, four cubed, that's four times four times four, that ends up being 64, okay? So then from here, I would add that one to both sides, okay, right, because the x isn't quite by itself yet. So I'll get 13x equals 64 plus one is 65, okay? And then the last step is to just divide, right? Because that's the last number that's over there with the x. So you would divide. Again, you could use a calculator because that's something you might not know off the top of your head. But 65 divided by 13 ends up be just being 5, okay? Now, looking at number 5. 5 and 6 are a little trickier, especially number 6 is going to be a monster. But number 5 first, this isn't too bad, okay? So we have the square root of x minus 7 equals the square root of 3x plus one, okay? Thankfully, these have the same index, right? They're both square roots. So we can cancel both radicals at once, right? If I square this side, what's gonna happen? Well, that's gonna cancel out that radical, right? And then again, my rule says I have to do the same thing to both sides, but that's gonna be productive too because that's gonna cancel out the other radical, okay? Because again, I can't, because there everything was under a radical, and there was nothing to really cancel that was outside of a radical there, that's where I have to start with this one, okay? So I square both sides, and then I'm just left with the same thing, just without the radicals, right? So x minus seven equals three x plus one, okay? And then from here, again, I just wanna get the x by itself. And so I have two different x's, so I wanna start by just canceling one of those out. It doesn't matter which one. I like to cancel out the one on the right just to keep it consistent, okay? So I minus three X from both sides, okay? And I'd be left with negative two X minus seven equals one, okay? So then again, I can go up here and I would get negative two X minus seven equals one. And then I could plus seven to both sides and get negative 2x equals 8, all right? Then my last step, divide by negative 2, x equals negative 4. Now, a question that comes up with a problem like number 5 is, like, when you go to plug this in, okay, when you go to substitute this back in to check your answer, what would happen is you would get the square root of negative 4 minus 7 equals the square root of 3 times negative 4 minus 1, okay? And if you would solve that out, right, negative 4 minus 7 would be negative 11, 
and then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Negative 12, my, I'm sorry, this should be plus 1. Negative 12 plus 1 would also be negative 11. So you might be looking at those and thinking, oh, I, I thought we couldn't do square root of negatives, okay? And again, if we would just put square root of negative 11 into a calculator, we would get, yeah, we would, we would be told there's an error, right? Um, but again, we learned a little bit with, with imaginary numbers, right? So we could say i times the square root of 11 equals i times the square root of 11, okay? So while this would produce imaginary solutions, if I got this x as an answer, okay, technically the two sides still are equal, okay? So that does make that a good solution. Now, I said number six was going to be a little bit of a monster, okay? Because, look, I have the square root of x plus 6 equals x, okay? I have two different x's here. With this one, let's just go about it the same way I would, okay? It's weird here because we can't really get an x all by itself when we have these two different x's, okay? So here's what we would do, okay? We still want to get rid of this radical because this radical of x isn't really helping me. It's making the problem a little bit more complex, okay? So I would still minus this 6 from both sides, okay? I would be left with the square root of x equals... Again, this is a, a variable minus a constant, so I leave those separate, okay? And then from here, I am going to square both sides, okay? Still to cancel out this radical, okay? But again, squaring this side, what's going to happen there? Again, this is a whole group, okay? X minus 6, that's a, that's a polynomial group. That's a, that's a binomial, okay? So squaring a binomial, that's going to be a little bit weird, okay? But, again, my goal was achieved because I, I still canceled out that radical, right? So I just have x over here. And then on this right side, I have x minus 6 squared. Again, another way to write that would be x minus 6 times x minus 6. You would not just distribute that radical, okay? Because, again, that, that exponent is saying something times itself, right? So I would end up foiling this. So if I foiled this here, I'd be left with x squared minus 6x minus 6x uh, plus 36. And so then I can combine those like terms, right? I'm left with x equals x squared minus 12x plus 36, okay? And then, okay, you might be wondering, oh, what do I do now? This is saying x equals this group, okay? With, and this becomes a quadratic equation that we learned how to solve back in unit three, okay? So with quadratic equations, right, we learned those multiple strategies to solve it, right? The quadratic formula, solving by factoring. We're going to end up solving by factoring with this one, okay? But for the, in order to do that, which with whatever strategy, I need all the x's to be on the same side, okay? So if I did minus the x here, I would minus it with the other x term, x to the first term on the other side, and I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 13x plus 36, okay? So the equation is not solved yet, but now I have this solved in a way that I'm going to be able to solve the quadratic using one of my strategies, okay? I don't have enough room, so let me erase some of this, but we'll continue on from here. Okay, now, we have this trinomial, okay? And again, for me, what I think is easiest is if we can factor this, get it into those two binomial groups, and then solve it that way, that's usually easier and takes less time than the quadratic formula, okay? Like I said when I taught it to you, the quadratic formula is usually like the last resort, okay? So if we were to try to factor this, again, I taught my kids to do this using the tic-tac-toe method, okay? So we'd make our tic-tac-toe board, Again, I'm kind of ignoring the, the zero on the other side. Okay, I'm just focusing on my trinomial group. Okay, so I would have x squared. I would have the positive 36, and I would have the negative 13x here in my check column, right? That's going to help me to check it to make sure I got the right combination of numbers. So what I want to fill in is what multiplies to get x squared. And that's easy, right? x times x is x squared, right? And then I want to figure out, okay, what multiplies to give me a positive 36? Okay, and this is going to be a little bit tricky because, right, there's lots of different factors of 36, right? Lots of different numbers multiply to get 36. But, again, as you look ahead here, 
I have a negative number in my check column, and there's no way that two positive numbers can add to give to get a negative answer. Okay, so what does that mean? Again, you think about positive 36 and what multiplies to get that. Well, a positive times a positive will equal a positive, but a negative times a negative will also equal a positive, right? So I need to consider the negatives of all of these. Okay, so negative 36 times negative one. And again, with a little bit of mental math, you can kind of figure out, okay, which pair, if I added them, will add to give me this negative 13x, because these are both single x's here. So really, I'm just worried about this pair. But it ends up being negative 9 and negative 4. Okay. When I multiply those, I'm going to get positive 36. And I multiply across, I would get negative 9x, negative 4x. And I add them up, right, negative 4 plus negative 9 gives me that negative 13. Okay. So that makes my two binomial groups here. This is going to turn into this trinomial part is going to turn into these two binomial groups. Okay, so it's going to be 0 equals x minus 9 and x minus 4. Again, getting those from my, my tic-tac-toe there. Okay, and the last step here, we're almost done. We almost got my answers. Again, because it is a quadratic, I'm going to have two different answers. And again, I get that from taking my two answer groups and setting it equal to 0. Okay, so I say x minus 9 equals 0 x minus 4 equals 0, right? And then I get the x by itself. So x equals 9, x equals 4, right? I would just add those numbers to the other side. And then if I substituted those in, if I substitute 9 in for both x's, the square root of 9 would be 3. 3 plus 6, and again, that's when x is 9, so that works, okay? And then the other side, 4. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus six, does that, so this happens sometimes, okay? So the, so we checked my answer, so this one works, okay? Okay, but if I plugged in four in here, okay? So look, this is, this is why it's helpful to always check your answers, especially with these ones that we have two different answers for, okay? So if I check my answer here, I plug in four, so the square root of four plus six, does that equal four, okay? So the square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 6, that doesn't equal 4, right? 2 plus 6 would be 8, okay? So this, so this we checked my answer here. I did it kind of, I talked to it, that one works. But 4, well, sometimes we have this. This would be called an extraneous solution, meaning it appears to be an answer when we solve it, but then when we check the answer, it doesn't end up working, okay? So extraneous kind of means like fake. It's a fake answer, we solve for it, uh, but it doesn't end up working out, okay? So I just squeezed it in there, it would be extraneous, okay? So there is a bunch of problems on solving some radical equations. Hope that made sense, thanks.